Well, we are very sorry that we don't seem to have sound at the moment on this resume of today's uh, Pope's visit, but uh, we're doing our best to trace the fault and we'll bring it to you as soon as possible. to see him. There had been a little doubt as to which helicopter he was in, because there were two that arrived. But when that door opened and the familiar figure in white arrived, there was no doubt in the crowd's mind who they were waiting to see and who they wanted to see. Coming down the steps behind him, Cardinal Gray, the Cardinal Archbishop of St Andrews in Edinburgh, and he was greeted there by Archbishop William of Glasgow. This was possibly the one event in the whole of the British tour so far where the Pope had more people than was expected. Upwards probably of 250,000, nearer 300,000. Father Anthony Ross, the head of the Dominican Order in Great Britain and its missions overseas, what was your feeling when you saw these scenes earlier this evening? Well, I've never seen such crowds in one place before. And uh, it was immensely moving to catch the atmosphere which they created, the eagerness, the expectation, the sheer gladness with which they waited and greeted the Pope. Astonishing. It was indeed a disciplined gladness. As I said, there were bands, there was singing from a thousand strong youth choir and there were Gallic choir, Polish choir, all sorts of choirs. And instruments. bonus on such an open air and public occasion of first class, really warm weather. Some of the Polish community in Scotland, who are about 3,000 strong, who've been at almost every venue that we've seen in the last two days. papal transport. This was the big one, the sixth wheel variety for the really big British public occasions. And 
this was certainly the biggest meeting in Scotland. So to the skirt of the pipes and the waving of tens of thousands of flags, the flash of all the tartans in Scotland that you could believe and probably a few more besides, the Pope paraded in and out of the 265 enclosures containing each up to 1,200 people so that they could see him and be from him no further away than perhaps 25 yards at any time that he passed them. In many ways, Father Ross, I suppose Pope John Paul II is one of the most public popes of this century. Oh, I think easily the most public, because although Pius XII was a very public man, he stayed mostly in Rome. Paul VI travelled, but nothing like uh, the present Pope who already, I think, must have seen more people than the other two put together. He certainly clocked up at least 20 foreign tours of yes. great magnitude yes. since he became Pope. And these are some of the stewards in their red bonnets and bibs. A message just to let everyone know, hang about, he'll be near you soon. Because in such a vast area, it was very difficult for anyone who wasn't watching television to be able to see the Pope through the trees and over the little hillocks and round the tents carrying the catering apparatus, the toilets and the first aid centres. Experience, the like of which the Pope has possibly not seen quite so enthusiastically on this tour so far. How does he like them, do you think, all these noises of tens of hundreds of thousands of people? Well, judging by his face, he enjoys them. And he seems to react to uh, particular groups in the crowd. You know, he, he notices uh, a group of youngsters dancing up and down, that kind of thing. But uh, oh, he gives every sign of appreciating it. The whole travel round Bellahusen Park was a bit of a maze because of all the pathways that the Pope's vehicle could take, going to left, right, or straight ahead, and it's maybe not surprising, therefore, that on just one or two occasions, the papal vehicle took a wrong turn. But it always managed to get back again. It's the sort of fact that he might use in a sermon. He rather likes these simple images. Wrong twist in life, and then you get back on the goal again. Father Ross, you yourself at one point doubted whether the tour was a wise idea. Why was that, and why did you then change your mind? I doubt it for two reasons. One, because 
you know, we're a pretty uh, cool lot in Scotland. At least we give the impression being very slow to be enthusiastic. And then the second thing was, I wondered whether we were ready for it, whether we were sufficiently prepared ecumenically. And uh, I've no doubt now at all. I'm rather like Gareth Bishop Morsinkas, who looked very worried at the beginning of the tour, but has been smiling more and more as it's gone on. That's the American-born bodyguard. Yes, Pope. he's smiling today very warmly. Now the Pope and the Archbishops and the Cardinals and the Bishops all rode for the celebration of the Mass. And Pope John Paul coming forward to the front of the dais, high up on a hill above Bellahousen Park to accept the plaudits and the greetings of this vast crowd. The Glasgow skyline with its tower blocks and the Pope. very simple ring that the late Pope uh, Paul VI introduced uh, instead of the old-fashioned one with large gems. The incensing of the altar is a customary beginning to a solemn mass. And after this, there's a short penitential rite, and then there's a service of the word, reading some scripture, and uh, probably there'll be some singing, of course, in between the, the readings. And after that, uh, the Pope's sermon, his homily. And then uh, the Eucharistic prayer properly, the celebration of the Last Supper communion service. so many in Scotland over these last two days by the power of his speeches, of his passionate belief, of his devotion, of his sincerity, of in many ways his uncompromisingness in his delivery of the message. And it was no different here at Bella Houston Park in Glasgow today. Dear sons and daughters of the Catholic Church in Scotland,
sacred scripture bears eloquent witness to the unshakable faith which one generation of mankind to the next placed in God. From the time of Abraham onwards through the centuries, that truth remained firmly founded on God's promise to send a savior who would deliver his people. Of all the expressions of faith, none was more spontaneous than but uttered by Andrew, the fisherman of Galilee. We have found the Messiah. So profound was the, the impression Jesus based upon him and their first encounter that early next morning Andrew met his brother and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, you are Simon son of John. You are to be called Kephas, meaning rock. It was Andrew, the heavenly patron of, of, of your beloved Scotland, who introduced Peter to Jesus. Today marks another significant moment in the history of our salvation. The successor of Peter comes to visit the spiritual children of Andrew. Before concluding, I wish to address for a few moments that larger community of believers in Christ who share with my Catholic brothers and sisters the privilege of being Scots, sons, Sons and daughters alike of this ancient nation, I know of the veneration in which you hold the sacred scriptures, accepting them for what they are, the word of God and not of man. I have reserved until now and should like to read to you the remaining words from that passage of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were all called into one and the same hope when you were called.
There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God who is Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. This passage clearly reveal, reveals that will, the will of God for, for mankind, a plan which human wills may oppose by cannot thwart. It is God's plan for all of us, for there is no eternal city for us in this life, but we look for one in the life to come. We are only pilgrims on this earth, making our way towards that heavenly kingdom promised to us as God's children. Beloved brethren in Christ, for the future, can we not make that pilgrimage together, hand in hand, The Pope speaking to the faithful today at Bella Houston Park. A speech received with rapturous applause, as was his every movement indeed, whether or not he spoke. the Pope left Bella Houston Park, an hour and a half late as it turned out, the Pope listened to the song which is international, Auld Lang Syne, and started very definitely here in Scotland.